Hi guys, this is Matthias, and in this video I'd like to talk about some of the changes that are coming the 4th of December. The first real patch for Battlefield 5. Now one of the biggest concerns that people have had and that has been oh, confirmed by DICE that is going to change is when bombers and I guess other planes can uh, get an insane amount of kills in the very beginning of the round when everyone in the opposing team is grouped up in the spawn. That's why you don't drive the main road. Now this basically happens every round, at least in Conquest and Conquest Assault. I have just recently started playing Operations and I'm sure it happens there as well. Now another thing that is related to the start of the game and the spawn is that we are no longer going to be auto-spawned in the beginning of a round. However, what we haven't seen is one of my biggest concerns, and that is that in the spawn menu, you can't choose what vehicle you would like to spawn into once that vehicle is available. You have to wait until the vehicle is available, meaning even planes, and then you can choose between three of those five. Every single time. Look, he, he got 10 kills there. So what I'm talking about with the spawn menu is this, and to be honest I'm actually a little bit disappointed with uh, the lack of options for infantry gameplay. We had much better options in my opinion in Battlefield 1, but I have to say that what's getting really really irritating is that you can't choose ahead of time what vehicle you want to spawn once that vehicle is available as long as it says zero on that vehicle spawn. And don't worry, I'm going to bring up uh, infantry changes in this video soon as well. Now what I didn't see was any kind of balance to the Spitfires. Some people would say that the MKVA gets a little bit too powerful with one of the first upgrades. This gun that you see me using here, it's the 8x.303 uh, machine guns. It, sometimes I stumble when I try to say that. Now obviously choosing that gun and the path of upgrades you can get after that will of course also give this plane a lot of drawbacks compared to the other planes. But personally I think the one plane that really stands out is the other Spitfire, the MKVB. And that one sticks out in a different direction, meaning that it is actually, in my opinion at least, really really bad. Now it does compensate a little bit with the 8 timer rockets, or maybe if you choose a different upgrade path than I did. But no matter how I look at the specialization tree of the MKVB, that plane just simply doesn't match the other three planes. I also heard that they're going to increase the damage that Flak does against bombers, but they're going to keep it the way it is against fighters. So far I'm not entirely sure if they're going to make any other changes to bombers, especially when it comes to their anti-infantry role. Another thing that's coming the 4th of December is the practice range and that one would have been fantastic if it was there at the release of the game, at least for me, because that would have been perfect in order to get your settings correct. Now again on a personal level, I find uh, things like that quite useful when you want to test uh, the behavior, the recoil pattern or the spray pattern of any weapon that you are uncertain about. I really enjoyed it more than I thought I would enjoy it when it was implemented in a game that I played a long time ago, Planet Side 2. It was actually really, really useful. Whether or not it's going to be useful in Battlefield 5, I have no idea. Uh, this game doesn't present the same kind of challenges or the same kind of weapon behavior, so maybe it's not all that necessary, but at least we're gonna get it. Now, another thing that at least some people are going to be very excited about is the new map Panzer Storm. And I'm sure as the name suggests it's going to be heavily vehicle based. So there'll be a lot more tanks on that map than any of the other maps that we've played so far. And yeah, whether or not this is a good thing or a bad thing, that is of course entirely up to you, whatever you think about it. And here I want to give you another quick tip that I have said before and I'll repeat it. If you are having trouble with the visibility in this game, one of the things that you might want to do is to lower the contrast. I always play with contrast on 40, default on my monitor or uh, on my desktop is 50. So I always, no matter what map, have the contrast lowered by 20% and then whether I increase or decrease the gamma that depends on the map. Basically it's the same as brightness or well close to anyway. So now the main thing for a lot of players is of course the time to kill and the time to death. I've seen a number of discussions on reddit about it and people who either want to have this changed or who want to keep it the way it is are normally very passionate about their opinions. They either have a very strong opinion that they want to keep it the way it is, don't touch my TTK, or if they want to change it, then they really want to change it. Me, I'm more like, yeah, whatever. 
but there are a lot of other things that are going to be changed to infantry gameplay that I think is going to be really, really important. Some of them I really do welcome. Now, if you want to take your own little sneak peek at this and read through this yourself, then I will put a link in the description. You can check it out on your own. So now, one of the things that has been announced is that medic weapons are going to get a buff. And from what I'm reading here, uh, there's not going to be a buff to the damage output, but it's going to be a uh, buff to, well, damage in a way. Um, the range damage of uh, medic weapons are going to be increased, and they will also have a buff to their bullet velocity. Now, without being too specific and going too much into details, I think that for the most part, it is the slow rate of fire weapons that are going to have an increase in its range capability. That's basically what they're saying. So this weapon, the Somi, may not be one of those weapons that are being affected the most. We will also see a little bit of a buff to the fully automatic weapons of the Assault class, the Stormgiver and the STG-44, and a nerf to the KE-7 of the Support class. So this is going to be a rather big patch. There's a lot of things happening, some uh, quite major changes actually. And I have to say, I'm starting to get the feeling here that Battlefield 5 is getting more and more balanced based on uh, operations. And Conquest is more or less being neglected. And I'm saying that based on some of the things that uh, the devs have said about why they are making certain changes. Certain, certain reasons that they're giving makes perfect sense in operations, but it doesn't really make any sense in Conquest. And there are several examples of it. But uh, I don't want to elaborate on it too much now. I want to see what happens in some future updates before I uh, want to start a discussion about it. Now, announced was also that there's oh, going to be more. some changes to uh, revives. But the whole thing nice. about the dragging a teammate into safety before reviving, that is something that's going to happen later. So about a more specific change that's going to happen to the SMGs of the medic class is that their 5 bullet kill range will be increased from 25 meters to 30. And based on what I can read into in this sneak peek, medic weapons are also going to be a little bit easier to handle. Nice. So yeah, the changes to the medic class is probably a welcome one. Maybe as welcome as the changes to the KE-7, I don't know. But if you really love the K7, the default weapon of the support class, then perhaps now it's time to say goodbye to it. Anyway, just want to point out a few of the changes that are coming 4th of December. Now for the rest of the video, you'll see some mixed infantry gameplay. I hope you will enjoy it. And thanks for watching. Oh, shit!
Oh yeah, baby. Oh, what? 